Hello and welcome back to another episode of NBA Basketball Talk. Hello and welcome back, everyone. NBA season's back, baby. Let's go. Woo-hoo-hoo. Hello, hello, hello. You got Kilroy, Mongo, and Kevin. What's up, Kev? Our buddy hey, Tommy what's up? Feel well today, so we took the night off. Tommy, feel better, brother? We'll do you proud tonight. Uh, don't worry, Mongo only swallowed a horse. I, I was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I will tell you exactly why. Because I'm a Yankees fan and I have nothing better to be doing next week. So, because the season is oh, pretty fresh and new, there's not too. Uh, we're not going to go over the records. They're kind of meaningless at this point. Uh, other than we'll, we will highlight um, in our when we go through the list the, the records list. that the matter. list. We've only Speaking got five which, days of games so far. So records don't mean which, anything at, mo- at the moment. Where's the button? Which one is it? That one. The I-80 Sports Traffic Report, where you can find all your news and notes from the week. You may be wondering, why do we have to use some other program's button for that? Because they don't trust us with our own. (laughs) I don't trust us with our own. I don't either. Bob, you're making the correct choice there. We'll just keep borrowing from you guys over at football. All right, everyone. So, let's talk basketball, because that's what we're here for. Yes. So, we have... um, we're going to start, we'll move, we'll start with the WNBA and then we'll move into the NBA. Uh, for those of you who are new to us, welcome. Uh, we also talk WNBA shop every once in a while. Uh, there's two talking points that we want to mention before we uh, do the day, do the good old uh, NBA. Number one is uh, Brittany Griner is still in Russia. Uh, she just spent her 32nd birthday still in prison in Russia with no signs of anything happening. I do know that the U S did is attempting to try to get her back in some way, but obviously that is a uh, process that is not going to go quickly, uh, especially seeing that the Russia is engaged in warfare with Ukraine, who is an ally of others. Yeah, uh, for for me, I wish there was news here. There's really not news, and that in itself is the news. Um, you know, this is the kind of story that if schmucks like us don't just every now and then remind you, hey, this is still happening, uh, it falls by the wayside, and and that's when you know these, you know, people. Let me emphasize that people like Brittany Griner, not celebrities, not criminals, people get completely lost in the shuffle. So friendly reminder, it's crazy that this is happening. It's even crazier that this is still happening. Yep. And we also have uh, a new head coach for the Spark. Uh, Sparks, Mongo, would you like to take this? Yeah, absolutely. So Kurt Miller has been um, announced as the new head coach of the Los Angeles Sparks. Um, now, the Sparks have been in a little bit of a re, uh, rebuild here the last couple of years. And this is a big one because Kurt Miller just led the Connecticut Sun uh, to the finals, to the WNBA championship, where they lost, um, but still, uh, you know, winning experience. And now what's more important is the Sparks have a ton of cap space um, because they have a ton of uh, impending free agents, including um, the Anguamike sisters, um, Neka and Chene. Uh Neka, a former uh, MVP, so you definitely want to resign her. And Cheney actually played under Kurt Miller in Connecticut and by all accounts got along very well, just left to be with her sister. And so if you can get those two to resign, you now have an MVP level talent there um, and still plenty of money to mess around. You can finally get yourself out of this rebuild. So not only is that a win for the Sparks and a great signing by them, but, you know, any league common sense 101, if you want the WNBA to have any success, you know you need your L.A. and New- your New York teams to be successful. So not just a win for the Sparks, you know, this week, but a win for the WNBA in general. The NBA is still trying to figure that part out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Lakers and Knicks, you can take a playbook. You know, you can take one out of the playbook here. So transitioning into the NBA, we uh, just hinted at it. But uh, we'll start with our team. We'll start with the Knicks. Um, they played two games so far. 
they are one and one, which is pretty good for them, you know, and they actually played very well in game one in the loss. Um, RJ is having issues, uh, was having issues in that particular game with uh, shot you know, just making shots, which happens as part of the game. You know, these guys are still getting off the rust from the, you know, the, the, the off season. Yes, they do. did have some uh, games and stuff like that, that they play, you know, preseason games, but that only does so much. Um, I don't, I actually just expect them to continue getting better as the season goes on. This team looks really good in the, in the first couple games. Um, I, I still have them being like a playing team. I, I, I don't see them, winning the division by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but it's, it's promising. It's very familiar feeling to a couple years ago when they snuck in and got the fourth seed. I'd like to point out that I was really impressed with how they were down big, like 18 or 20 points against the Grizzlies and fought back and actually took the lead in the fourth quarter at one point before going to overtime and eventually losing. Uh, yep. What, what I saw from the offense the offense seems to be much better with Jalen Brunson running things at the point, even though he got into quite a bit of foul trouble that first night. Um, I didn't get a lot. I didn't get to watch, unfortunately, much of the second game. I was somewhere. I was away that. I was away that night. But uh, it, when I. But they seem. But they seem to be playing really well. So this is a very good sign for the Knicks. And like like uh, like Kilroy, I do have them as a playing team to, uh, for this uh, coming hopefully for this coming postseason. Yeah, unfortunately, we saw from the the end of the Nick Grizzly game and then from the Grizzlies' second game, at least while the Grizzlies are not at 100% strength, they're without Triple J, they're without Dylan Brooks, you can get under their skin. We saw the Grizzlies just straight up fold after the Mavs got off to a hot start. And so it's really a shame, um, in case you've never watched the show before, I like to use the John Starks 1994 <laughs> scale uh, as my as my scale for terrible shooting. And uh, RJ Barrett was about a 12 out of 10 on the Stark scale in that in the, in the beginning of that game. So it's really a shame because if Barrett could have at least kept them in that game, if not, you know, got them ahead early, it looks like you can get you can get to the Grizzlies this year, at least while they're not you know healthy. Um, but I really love the way they came back. Um, you know, Cam Reddish has been good in both games. Obi Toppin looked very good in the second game. Um, you know, this this bench should be a strength for them. And, um, you know, we've, we've seen different guys do it through the first couple of games. Cam Reddish, weirdly being the one guy who's done it both. Um, Isaiah Hartenstein looks like a, a great find, um, which is good because Mitch Robinson looks like he's up to his same old, I'm a foul out whenever I want tricks. And, um, you know, they run 10-11 deep. I'm, I'm excited to watch this team generally be competitive in most games. I'm with you guys. They haven't done anything yet that makes me think take them off the bubble, take them out of the, you know, the play. And, um, but though at least there's no game I'm going to turn on and go, why am I doing this? You know, you, you watch other teams around or you watch other teams in the NBA and you go, what, what is the point of, of doing this this year? That shouldn't at any point be the Knicks this year. Yeah. And uh, that in and of itself is already an improvement from last year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and most of the last 20 years, I mean, how often yeah. as Knicks fans by Christmas are we like, can we just draft again yet? Uh, so speaking of things looking better, let's go and switch to things not looking as good as they teams were hoping. Let's talk about the Lakers. <laughs> the Lakers are 0-3, and they have looked ugly in the first two. I didn't look at the stats from today's game, but from the first two games, they looked ugly. And it looks like LeBron is still having to carry this team to even be competitive in the games. And for forty year old, 40, almost 40-year-old 40 man, that you just can't have that. You just, you just can't. Anthony Davis is fine he's doing okay but a lot of the and again not entirely Westbrook's fault but Westbrook uh Patrick Beverly and who was the other one Lonnie Walker I'm sorry you're thinking about Lonnie Walker the fourth no, Walker's doing fine um Kendrick anyway, Nunn Kendrick no. Nunn there we go. There you go they're all struggling early on I don't know again I didn't look at today's stats from today's game but in the oh. first two games they did not, not – none of those three looked great. I did hear – again, I didn't really watch because it's it's tough <laughs> watching Lakers games. Um, but I did hear at least Westbrook's defense is, is improving. And that's at least promising. But for how much he's getting paid, he needs to he needs to step up offensively. And obviously not just him. The team as a whole needs to gel better. Um, they, they did a lot of th weird additions – in what looked like they were going to be flipping Westbrook. 
all the moves they made made it seem like, okay, now we have the point guards we're looking for. We can trade Westbrook, get the shooters we want. And then they never did that for whatever reason. Apparently they had trades on the table that they could have taken from the Jazz and got in and and it, it, and they, I think they ended up. Some of it was only giving up one of those two draft picks that they didn't want to give up, is what I saw. But obviously, this is a lot of that is is um, you know trying to make yourself look better, you know. But at the same time, you know the Lakers do need to try to figure something out. Do they look to to trade for Gordon Haywood? Um, he is a shooter. He's a type of player that they could use. And honestly, the. <laughs> The Hornets are not good. They're not going to be good anytime soon this year because of injuries uh, and just terrible news across the whole (laughs) offseason for them. Let them have Westbrook. Let him run around and do Westbrook things, put up 30, 10, and 10, or whatever he puts up. They get him his expiring contract. They can then go into the offseason building around ball again. Lakers get their shooter. And I think a player like Gordon Hayward and whoever else they would have to get for cap reasons would improve this team significantly. Yes, Kevin. I just wanted to give out today's stats from those three players. Nunn, Beverly, and Westbrook. Five made field goals, 17 points combined from the three of them. Can you please identify the five starters on the Lakers today, Kevin? Uh, It appears to be Walker, James, Davis, Beverly, Westbrook. Okay, so Kev, before I before I take this thing off the rails by telling you why we shouldn't be hitting the panic button, anything you want to add here to to Kilroy's thesis? Um, no, go ahead. Floor is yours. <clears throat> all right. So first of all, uh, I, the one thing I will not refute is Westbrook is old. He looks old, even on defense where he looks better than on offense. And since we're contractually obligated to mention Ben Simmons once an episode, which we will be. <laughs> It's okay for Westbrook to be taking on the Ben Simmons in New Jersey, uh, sorry, in Brooklyn role, which is if he just plays defense, once they figure out who their actual shooting guard on this team is with AD and LeBron there, that should be enough. The problem is Patrick Beverly slash Westbrook is not the correct answer for who should be the starting two on this team. Those guys should not be playing together. And the two of them and Kendrick Nunn are way too much of a redundancy. So if you want to let Kendrick Nunn be the 11th guy on this team, cool. If you want to trade him, cool. But the, uh uh-oh, we have three similar point guards, let's pigeonhole two of them together strategy is is not going to work. Now, with that being said, I'm sorry. I just want to say that is really what I was meaning by that they, that they, when I was saying that they went out, their off-season additions didn't, made it seem like they were trying to trade Westbrook. Right, Beverly coming in suggests that Westbrook should go out. I'm with you on that. Or, but you can trade Kendrick Nunn much more Someone, easily. Someone, right? Like, it doesn't you know? have to be him, right. but it just, it like you were saying, with the redundancy, it doesn't make sense to have three guys who are very similar playing together. Right. Now, here, as a Laker fan, which uh, I'm sure there's many, many of you out there, even if less of you are willing to admit it. Um, <laughs> we know that as Knicks fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, here's why you're not panicking yet. You have lost three games. You have lost two. The two-time MVP, you have lost to the reigning champs on ring night, and you have lost to a much improved Portland team that I was bragging about the entire offseason. You you have every right to be 0-3 right now. And furthermore, last year with the, you know, with, with Zion and with Lillard getting hurt, there were seven, easily seven really, really bad teams in the West. And so for the Lakers, it seemed like they should be able to have literally sputtered their way to about eighth or ninth. But by all accounts, they were one of the 10 best teams. But this year, when you look at the West with Portland getting better, with Zion being healthy, you really in no way can justify the Lakers being in the top nine, really, with Minnesota getting better and everything else. So at this point, if you're the Lakers, here's what you're doing. You're saying the Thunder look bad, the Spurs look bad, the Rockets look bad, the Jazz look bad, and the Kings look bad. And we should be able to take 10th, nothing more, nothing less. So if you're a Lakers fan, unless, you know, the Jazz are a 2-0 last I checked, if all of a sudden they're 11-3 and by some magic, you know, then it's time to start panicking. If the Kings manage to get to 20-15, and then it's time to start panicking. But right now, 34, 32 wins should get you into the dance, at which point having LeBron in any elimination series, you have a shot. 
So a reasonable 0 and 3 with a very bottom third bad sorry a very bad bottom third of the west I'm okay. I'm okay right now if I'm a Laker fan. That's not really I mean I understand what you're saying but that's not really the the But what was your expectation? Like if you were a Laker fan, sorry, let me rephrase this. If you were a Laker fan who on on August 1st said I hate this, you have then you have every right to still hate this. But if if one week ago you were excited about this team and now you are not. Why are you not? Well, you played yeah, that, three games where understand. you were a clinical underdog, right, right. and you lost all three games. Okay, well, that I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I, no, no. From that perspective, I understand it, and I do agree. Uh, the Lakers have a fir- their first eight games are going to be very tough. I, it's they could go zero and eight right. just because and, it's very tough. They're right. playing, and the, again, the top of the West is really good. Correct, and they are not in the top. No, no, uh, no. you know, and it, part of it is their own doing. I mean, a lot of it's their own doing. Um, they just instead of trying to get younger, they just weren't. And then their ac- acquisitions were a, a little bit confusing, and did suggest that they were going to trade Westbrook. So it seems odd that by, that that you that they stuck with him. Was it was it that they just were? It, it was impossible to move him because of his forty seven million dollar contract, which obviously is a lot and understandably hard to trade without giving up all your assets which means it's then going to be hard to then make any type of adjustment mid-season. So I do understand that. But then why did you have to get Patrick Beverly? Why did you keep Kendrick Nunn? Why didn't you try moving him or some? Right, right. There's always something that they could have done. It's not incur- – It's the, is it time to panic? No. Is this an encouraging start? Absolutely not. Oh, you don't, that, you that, don't want to, you don't want to be 0-3. Well. Of course. Um, luckily, the NBA is 82 games. Right. So, 80, so three losses is not terrible, but it does make you wonder what's going to happen once injuries start happening because the Lakers have a lot of players who are t- who have been getting injured. Uh, LeBron is, is getting to the Lakers, has not been able to stay as healthy as he was earlier in his career. He's also 38 years old in later this year. Anthony Davis, I, for the longest time, thought he just – was always sitting out because he never wanted to play for the Pelicans and was taking, you know, minor injuries and exaggerating them. It seems like, no, he is genuinely just a player who constantly gets hurt. And that's going to be an issue, especially seeing that's who they want their offense to go through. Which, unfortunately, the way the modern NBA is, you can't have one person be your offense, which is what the Lakers seem to want to do. Which and, and they do, and I don't blame them because again, if if Anthony Davis can be a true one again with LeBron, you know, a one A and a one B, and then you can start getting twelve a night out of Lonnie Walker, and you can get eight rebounds a night out of Thomas Bryant, and then again, whatever you can do to just let Russell Westbrook be a floor general and focus on defense, and make him a serviceable member of this team, what you don't want is having to say Russell Westbrook needs to make three threes tonight. For us to have a shot to win, you never ever want to find yourself saying that. And so the the more that everything is designed towards, I don't want to say protecting him, but it's designed towards minimizing your reliance on him. Again, very comparable to what's going on with Ben Simmons over in in Brooklyn. Kevin, can you do me a favor? Can you pull up all three games Westbrook stats, like how many shots he took each game? Well, Not I have you- the, I have today's game. He was four for fifteen from the field, zero oh for three from downtown. Uh, so he took 15 me, shots me, today. Let, let me see his. Let me see his stats from. While you're looking that up, Kev, I will say, well, you don't necessarily want him taking 15 shots. Period. Taking 80 percent of his shots from two is oh, roughly. Yeah. That's roughly what you want. Well, no, no, that's 100. If not, I, if not yeah, yeah, higher. No, no, I'm fine with that. My point is, I think he's been shooting at least 15 or more shots per game the first three games, and no. it seems odd. No, that's not true. I can tell you that right now. I'm looking at his stats right now. Um, he was 7 for 12 against Golden State, 1 for 3 from downtown. 0 for 11 uh, in game two, and six of those 11 shots were from downtown against the Clippers. That's the game you never, ever, ever – I don't care if he went 11 for 11. You never, you never ever want him taking 54% of his shots from three while shooting a double-digit number of times. You you do not want that if you were a Laker fan. Even single-digit, you don't want him to do that. Yeah, I don't know. That's true. If he goes 0 for 1 and that one shot is a three, that's still a disaster. 
<laughs> this is a dude who knows how to slash to the basket. This is a dude who should be getting some points in transition, especially if he's going to up his steals numbers focusing on his D. LeBron so, can facilitate. Now, my question is this. Is this – because how, how many threes has he taken all, uh, in all th- uh, total this year? Um, he's taken 12 three-point attempts and made all of one of them. So he's averaging about four <laughs> per game, right? Yes. So why is he – Why? Why now is that him just trying to show that he can shoot or is that the coaching? I I, I think that's got to be at least slightly strategic because if Patrick Beverly is out there with him, he is at times a shooting guard. He should be shooting. God. That's why this starting five is not a correct starting five together. By the way – um, Russell Westbrook career three point shooting percentage is only 30.4%. Another reason why you don't want him as a Laker fan to be shooting three pointers. It's weird. It's just weird. Why, why is he shooting so many threes? That's all. I mean, I, I get, I get that he, he needs to take shots, right? Like he obviously needs to get shots in order to start getting a rhythm. That's how, that's how shooters work, but he's not, he's not a shooter. That's right. Like he, if he, his, especially slashing. So let him slash more, let him get in the lanes and get those baskets. Those easy transition baskets will start giving him his confidence. Are, I, again, I haven't watched any of the Laker games. Are they just not running the offense where that's possible? What, what, what is their style of offense that they're running? You know, I, I will say this, and I will say this broadly. I'm I'm just as I'm just guessing for the next couple months. I'm not saying what they've done so far. This team, and we we argued about this in the summer, and I will die on this hill. If you were to just run last year's team and this year's team through iterations of NBA Live franchise mode, this is a better team. They yes, have they definitely are. They have more true centers, more true shooters, more true point guards. They are a truly better team, but they are so so different this year that it is going to take them time to find out what works. I do think they eventually go on a little run somewhere late November, early December. And so I think part of their strategy right now is, well, let's just mess around. Let's see what happens when we take Westbrook out of his element. Let's see what happens. They might have a game where Anthony Davis puts up three points and nine assists just to see what happens when he's a top of the key facilitator. You know, they, again, because of where they are in the West, seemingly very safely far away from nine and 11 kind of locked into 10 they can mess around with a few losses here early on and and try and find are there some iterations of this team we didn't think about yet so i think that's where they're going more than anything especially since they like you mentioned they're starting with games they really shouldn't be winning anyway so get experimental here try out some different combinations and see if you can find your way maybe to some some you know kind of luck your way into a five you didn't really consider early on that's I, that's fine. I, I get it. I do. Um, hopefully that this doesn't. I I don't know. It seems odd that um, that I don't know. It just seems odd the the way that the they're that he's. It doesn't make sense. The, the offense just doesn't make sense right now to me. Maybe I'm. It's partly because I'm not watching, and partly because they are playing against much better teams right now. Right, and I we also it is worth remembering. This is a rookie head coach. This is. We genuinely have no idea, um, you know, how far down the path, how far willing is he, how far is he willing to sink with his ship? You know, is he going to get to 0 and 5 and be like, okay, I'm clearly overwhelmed here? Or is he going to pull a Dan Campbell and be like, this is who I am. Either the team will adjust to me or we will stink. Um and so I, I, we don't know that yet, and that's going to be very important. Are we going to see adjustments? Are we going to see it just go back to, hey, LeBron, you need to score 40 for us to win? Or is this just a bad coach for this team, and they're going to go nowhere? So that's important, too, in this case. Speaking of coaches, we now are going to switch over to a coach who is an NBA uh, former player, but a coach veteran who's coached a lot of teams and has had a lot of success and it sounds like we might be trusting the process again because, boy, the Sixers oh, are 0-3. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, but I do get to talk about my Sixers. All right, let's go. So the Sixers are 0-3. Um, they, they, they've been playing good teams I, is part of it, obviously, and just they're, they are in trying. Well, lost to the Spurs notwithstanding. But yeah. they lost to the two teams who you would theoretically think will be one of the two teams to knock them out of the Eastern you know, Conference eventually. Right. So, obviously, it's not really much to worry about. It Again, it is three games in. Uh, I am less worried about the 76ers than I am about the Lakers. Um, but no one wants to start 0-3. Correct. 
So, you know, they have to be thinking over in their head, hey, what can we do to get things jump started? Um, their lack of playing Matisse Thibel is weird, especially seeing he was very important to your team of the last couple of years. It seems odd that all of a sudden he's getting like 20 seconds a game. <laughs> I get what they're going for. The idea being that Melton and Thibel are defensively can be a bit of a redundancy. I, I understand conceptually. But here's the problem for anyone joining the show. If you don't know, when I'm not living in Kilroy's dining room, um, I'm a math I'm a math teacher by trade. And rule number one of stats is you can manipulate a statistic any way you want. And so while I agree with you completely, 0-3 is not what you want. Uh, Joel Embiid has been getting a ton of um, slack. We'll use a word I'm allowed to say on the internet here. Has been getting a ton of slack these first couple games. And people have been going to the stat that his plus minus you know, the team's plus minus with him on the court and without him on the court has been vast. You know, they are worse with him on the court this year. Okay, cool. Too early. Fun, fun stat. No, even worse. Philly, because Philadelphia had a deeper bench last year, you know, they, they moved on, um, you know, they brought in Melton, but that's led to Tybo being benched, which is basically a net neutral. And a couple of those young guys at the end of the bench, who used to at least give them five to seven, you know, clock eating minutes. Isaiah Joe is gone, guys like that. Um, you know, they're trying to figure out their rotations. And so through the first two games, in one game, they had Embiid sit early to come back in early to anchor the second team. And in the other game, they had him play the whole first quarter. So I don't care if you're an MVP candidate or if you're a rookie, if you're going to have to play two separate games in which you have to play two separate strategies, that's not going to go well for you. It's not going to go well for your team. So again, here's a situation of a coach just trying to figure things out early and knowing Doc Rivers, of all people, knowing that they're a good team. Okay, if I lose a game to the Spurs early, but it helps me figure out my rotations, I think any veteran coach would take that trade. So let's get off Joel Embiid's back for a minute. He wasn't 100% healthy in the offseason, so he's going to need time to get back anyway. And in the meantime, an early season bad loss, eh, and the other two are acceptable as well. Yeah. Kevin. Quick note on 0-3 start. Um, I did a quick search on Reddit looking for the worst start that still made the playoffs. It seems like from what I've seen so far, 0-9 is the break mark. They're fine. Uh, so the 2004-2005 Chicago Bulls started 0-9 and, and finished 47-35. and 35. So... Just wanna just wanna be just wanna uh, make sure that those Sixers fans out there, hey, you haven't reached 0 and 9 yet, so calm down there. Uh, but let's also realize they're Phil they're from Philadelphia, these fans, most of them. And they don't they are just always uh rough on their teams. Right. And if you if you look, I, I get it. If you look around Philadelphia, the Phillies are having one of the most magical runs in the history of the MLB, considering a year ago they wouldn't have even been in the playoffs. The Eagles are amongst the cream of the crop in the NFC and just organically by the flyers starting, everyone gets a little bit angrier in Philadelphia. I, I get how it works in Philly. Uh, you know, I was just there a couple of weeks, uh, last week or whenever, uh, whenever the Eagles played the Cowboys on Sunday night, I was at that one. Trust me. I, I love Philly fans. You guys are awesome. That's why I go hang out as, as and, you know, fake myself out to be an Eagles fan, but everyone relax on this one for a minute. They're going to be fine. They're a good team. They have the a bottom of the, they have one of the atrocious. best coaches in the league. <laughs> They'll be okay. They, they do have one of the best coaches. He will make his adjustments as much as I like to make fun of doc rivers because he's just, he's an easy target. That's fair. He, I would love to him as a coach. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, like, I that's mean, very true. Like, that's true. My choices were either make him the punching bag or make him the head coach of the Knicks. I'll take choice B very, very quickly. Um, so speaking of disappointments, Ben Simmons. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> ben Simmons. Uh, I, I don't know how he did in the second game because I really don't care. The first game. Poor, poorly. The guy fouled out in his first game of the season. He also fouled out good. in like preseason too, I think, right? And again, I say good, which is yeah. We, we that's what we were we've been talking about. He he is doing what he's supposed to be doing, right? He's not shooting, which good. is what you want. Good. Uh, he's being the defensive guy you want him to be. Good, good. which means fouls are going to happen. It's silly that he he. It's the first game of the year. I don't think anyone should be fouling in the first game of the year, though. But we're, we're sitting here talking about how we have teams like the Lakers and teams like the Sixers that are willing to kind of, you know, nurse their way into the season. And so if you're if you're like us who who treat the first two weeks of the season as, as 
extended preseason anyway, then yes, he should be. <laughs> first of all, uh, Steve Nash should be saying, okay, this dude is, is doing way too much. Right. Let's get him out. But he also should be saying, okay, I'm obviously doing way too much, uh, you know, uh, but it is promising though. Right. It, Cause you want right. to see a player. You putting, want, putting right. it, if you, you know. think we were wrong about the Lakers and the Sixers, you should love Ben Simmons. There's no way you could say we're wrong about all three of these because Ben Simmons is doing the opposite. He knows he needs to make his mark immediately given that he was an absolute pariah in New York last year. And he's smart enough to recognize not only is it definitely a better chance that he can do it on the defensive side, but then add in the fact, you know, Cam they Thomas don't need him to do it. All right. Cam Thomas looks like he's going to continue to grow. Joe Harris is back. He's not off to a great start, but we know that he has one function, shoot the ball. Obviously they have their big two. Seth Curry hasn't been healthy yet, but when he comes back, he has also one job, shoot the ball. There's so many shooters and so many scorers on this team. Um, you know, they've been finding a way to get Claxton involved. So just let Ben Simmons play defense, get off his back. And if he's getting lit up on the defensive side, okay, then we have a problem in a couple of weeks. But for right now, he seems to know his lane. Let him drive it. Ben Simmons, you do you, buddy. By the way, it should be noted, Ben Simmons is over 50% shooting in the fir- in each of the first two games from the field. Yeah, because Cause he's not taking many right, shots. He should basically – he should basically end up with stats similar to, uh, you know, like a Tyson Chandler on offense. He should be doing nothing but getting blocks and dunking the ball this season. If Which, you hey, really want to use him correctly. That's 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 really not a bad play. I mean, obviously, for a guy who's taken number one overall, it's horrible. But well, remember, for Nets, a player, oh, right. he, yeah, the, the Nets, Nets did not do take that. take him number one. Right. The Nets got him as a casualty of a contract they were desperate to get out of. He was a happy little accident. You know, anything you get out of him, because the whole point is for him to be the third amigo. As long as he does, you know, anything that doesn't prevent KD from getting to to the playoffs and ultimately, you know, as far as he can go, is great. And right now, defense is the best way to get there when you look at the rest of this team. Six points, ten rebounds, eight assists, two blocks today. That's what you want. Uh, on to surprises. This okay. would this would be Tommy's segment, but unfortunately, unfortunately, Tommy's not here. Uh, the and name of the segment Friday night's is game. sorry, not today. Friday night's game. Thank you. Not- we will we will be doing a segment pretty much regularly throughout the year called Tank Talk with Tommy. Um, Tommy's not here, so we'll pretend to be Tommy. Yeah, we'll be Tommy for the day. It's hey, tank- I'm Tommy. Oh, it, oh, oh. oh wait, no, that's not him. <laughs> that was the Kool Aid man. It's uh, it's Tank Talk with these guys. <laughs> because we have to keep the TTT thing going on. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll fill in for Tommy admirably. Obviously, in case you um, – why Tommy gets the segment, aside from the alliteration, is that in case you missed it, um, Commissioner uh, Adam Silver um, basically came out with an awful ta- uh, take on tanking that Tommy hated. Uh, effectively, Silver came out and said, uh, you know, tanking is awful. Teams should be relegated for tanking. And then immediately changed the tone and said – yeah, but there's really nothing we can do about it. It was really, really a weak look, and Tommy rightfully so called him out on it. Um, so we're going to let Tommy kind of head up the uh, tanking committee here. Um, and he's also a Spurs fan. Right. He's also a Spurs fan, so he's involved. But with that being said, um, it's so, apparently way harder to tank than we think it is. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> these the two teams that were really pushing hard this offseason to tank, the Jazz and the Spurs, both have winning records. Jazz are 2-0. and They are currently in another game right now, I believe, um, or, or at some point today. And the Spurs are 2-1, and one, uh, as Mongo said earlier, beating the Sixers, which is a team that you don't want to beat if you're a bad team. Correct. And the Jazz took out Jazz the are at, ha- Jazz are at halftime up 10. Jeez. <laughs> up 10 um, on the Pelicans. Now, I did not verbalize this to you guys in the preseason, but – I was genuinely worried looking at the Jazz roster. They have a lot of talent. There it, are a lot of individually talented human right. beings on that team, yes. Um, so I was worried that maybe they aren't actually set up to do a tank as much as they want to be. And so far early on, that might be the case. Now, obviously, it's a long season, 82 games. The Jazz will probably don't i don't know if they're ever going to panic right because danny Ainge is a master when it comes to, to de- wheeling and dealing anyway so he can always still not have to worry you know he can just make this team amazing anyway right like he doesn't have to get victor um or or um uh, Scoop- bayana and i don't know or the one of the twins or one of the right, other there, million people that are in this draft it's a great draft where if you're picking anywhere in about the top seven you you at least have a shot of making your team significantly better right 
Um, and they have so many draft picks, there's a chance they get the, one of those picks anyway. <laughs> right. So, you know, not really too, they, they, they don't have to worry too much. If anything, it's encouraged. It looks like they made the right decisions by moving on from Gobert and from Mitchell. It seems odd to say that. Um, and obviously, it's way too early to really truly know. But maybe this will be a shorter rebuild. Again, it is early. I am. Maybe, I understand maybe, that. Maybe it's not a rebuild. Maybe it's just a quick. Uh, maybe it's just a simple retooling. Like if instead of being a full rebuild, it's just a retooling. But here, here's where that gets dangerous. And again, I'm. I'm on the one hand, I'm never an, an, a fan of tanking. On the other hand, teams are going to have to get so creative to, to out-tank each other this year. I'm really looking forward to this. But here's <laughs> the problem. It looks like Sexton is going to be a, a very usable piece. Lori Markinen looks very good. Uh, Mike Conley, for the time being, has seemed to find the fountain of youth. Uh, he's definitely going to um, get traded, though. I, I don't know if he's going to get traded. I think eventually. I think the easiest thing to do is just start faking injuries on that dude, you know, or, or have him miss back to backs or things like that. Um, but you know, he looks he looked good on opening night anyway. Um, that young. But here's the got. problem. I think Walker Kessler looked good. Absolutely. I think this team's ceiling is somewhere between the the six and the eight seed, even in the future with its current iteration. And if you're the Jazz. Do you want to be an easy out in the Western playoffs for the next eight to 10 years? I mean, as, as fun, as good of a story as they would be to finish 40 and 42 and be the nine seed this year, long-term, what does that do? Because next year they would be 43 and 39 ish and be an easy out in the first round. Maybe at best they get to like 46 and 36 and stave off having to play in the play in one year. But yeah, I mean, I, I do understand what you're saying. Excuse me, sorry. But boy, they have the assets to just get in the uh, get it, to be like, screw you, Knicks. That on uh, everything the Knicks tried to do. That's that's true. And if if a disgruntled uh, you know superstar is looking, the Jazz are now in a position where they could go one of two ways. They can either shake off this three and zero start, and three weeks from now be five and twelve, um, or they can start looking around for who is that disgruntled superstar we can add to this because it looks like Mark hey, can we trade him Julius Randle? <laughs> I said superstar. Oh. Um, <laughs> it looks like, you know, it looks like a lot of the guys who are there are going to be very good, you know, secondary, if not tertiary options to play around a star. It's just a matter of, is that star going to be, you know, luckily given to them in the draft or are they going to have to go out and use those picks to buy it? But the Jazz look like they are are a major step away from being successful, um, as opposed to some of these other teams um, that look like they really need to now to hit an absolute superstar. Speaking of which, even though they're two and one, that's it doesn't look you don't want that as a Spurs fan, right? Because this team is really not as complete looking. Cor- correct. That is a team that really. I don't. I don't believe their ceiling at any point this year is the playoffs. I think all they are doing is getting themselves closer to the tenth pick than the first pick with each passing win. Um, the, the Jazz could accidentally sniff their way because again, let, not to not to repeat. I don't like to do it, but if you if you just look at the bottom of the West, if you genuinely believe the Lakers are not a playoff team, someone has to be the ten in the West, right? And if the Lakers are not that team, you have to somewhat believe the jazz and the Kings, maybe to some extent, the thunder, but I don't, I don't buy a world where the rock to me, the Rockets, the Rockets and the Spurs are, are definitively yeah. 14 and 15. And so if the Spurs win just enough games to get ahead of the Kings, to get ahead of the thunder, that does no good. But I, I don't have, I don't see a world where the Spurs are better than the Lakers and jazz. And um, so if, if I'm them, I'm, I, this is not, I mean, granted, they can still go two and 70, two and 80, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, each, each win for them hurts a little bit more than it would for say, you know, a Utah or maybe like a Detroit who could sneakily get their way. Or close even to the playoffs a, OKC okay, you know? it's, it's right. Like OKC okay, winning is not a bad thing, right? Cause they have, they have the talent. They lost their number one pick. Right. They have a top three pick already next year by virtue of getting Chet Holmgren back. Right. So, you know, I mean, and, and if you're OKC, you don't necessarily want uh, Victor. Obviously, he's talent wise, he's better than anyone you have. And that's just, you do take him. Right. Or you take the a zillion draft picks right. you can get for him. But right. probably you just but take him. He's not someone that you're desperate, like, that you're like, that you like 
want to like that they don't need him getting him is franchise changing right of course as long as again health and other things that are unforeseen you know you just can't you can't predict <laughs> but assuming he stays healthy has puts on a, a little bit of muscle or something to help uh, keep him a, as a secure frame and he's as talented as he looks and boy has did he look good in the pre in those preseason games against and uh, uh the G, uh the G League Ignite this they can afford it they can they can go you know they're not they're most likely not going to just cuz the 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 they don't seem to fully want to which is you know weird still at some point you want to try to win games but anyway i i digress spurs winning is more hurtful to them than the jazz winning yeah yeah i would say that uh, is there another tanking team that is that is winning that shouldn't be winning? Uh, nope, Magic or Owen three. Uh, Magic or Owen three. But if you if you are a gambler and you did not throw down on Boncaro for Rookie of the Year, which I did not. what what on earth are you doing with your with now? Your I wish I did. Um, I mean, I didn't put money on anything. Something but. like something like twenty three points, eight point seven boards, and three point three assists through his first three games. Um, and he looks really good aside from those stats. I, um, I get that this team is 0-3. I get that they're not supposed to be good this year. Uh, but, man, oh, man, do they have a cornerstone there. Um, right. But who should be my, running away with The good the news year. is, though, the bottom, the teams the ba- the teams that we knew were going to be bad in the East are bad, right? The Pacers are 1-2. Mm-hmm. They do look decent. They look better than I thought they were going to. But they're, they're not, like, they're not, like, going to be running away with the division or anything. Uh, the only, you know, the Detroit Pistons, we were not expecting to be, I, I was hopeful because they looked like they were getting the pieces that they wanted to make it a good, better team. But again, they're still, they're still trying to figure things out and they, they are also looking to go to the bottom. There are a couple of teams. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. I do need to give one quick piece of news that came in later yesterday. Sure. Um, Pistons, uh, assistant GM, Rob Murphy, um, harassment. Oh yes. Yes. I did um, see that there. too. My mistake. Um, so on top of everything else. Uh, now you have, uh, you know, behind the scenes issues. Um, they're a young team, so any bad press is going to hit them harder. Um, the Bagley injury has made them very small. Isaiah Stort looks like he can get bullied around pretty easily. Uh, Kevin Knox looks like the worst shooter in history. Um, if you want some fun here, Kev, can we get up Kevin Knox's stats on, for, through the first two games real quick? Because uh, they were historically atrocious. And um, why is he so mean? I, for for moments, so I had so I could have a good laugh last night, Kilroy, exclusively so I could have a good laugh. Um, but the Pistons look like if if we were just doing a power rankings after two to three games, which I know would be the dumbest idea in history. But if we did, you could make a really strong case for the Pistons being number thirty right now. They have looked just a mess on the court and off the court through these first couple games. Kevin Knox played in the first two games and did not play in game three. What do you want to know? His, his, his shooting. shooting. Just, his, just his shots made, shot attempts. Okay. Overall, two shots made, 14 attempts. Yeah, that, that 14%, baby. Ah, uh, Thank you, Kevin Knox. And I, I believe that was, isn't that something like one for eight and one for six? Yes, that is yeah. exactly right. One for eight in game one, one for not a Nick? in game two. Oh, so, so glad. Um, Boy. Uh, you know, and, and in the East, they, you have a couple of teams that you're, are, are a bit surprising with their records. Miami being one and two and Chicago also being one and two. Both of those were playoff teams. Miami really shouldn't be worrying. They are dealing with bunch, they are dealing with some injuries and just not having their full starting lineup ready. The Bulls also are dealing with injuries as well. No one knows if Lonzo Ball is ever playing basketball again. Although is, is the disgrace that was the Miami Heat on there on the list? The fight, yeah, the fight. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. coming up later. Okay, we we can talk about that when I'm done with the the, the bulls. Then let me just talk about the the bulls. Yeah, let's go with the bulls now. Keep going. And the bulls, you know, the bulls were not as good last year as their record indicated. You know, Wilt Chamberlain was reincarnated for like a few games in in, <laughs> in, in, in Demar Derozan. Rose's body, yeah, that's, and, that's, that's a fair way to say it. His his across the line stats were ridiculous. You're not. This is not disparaging marks to DeMar DeRozan, he is never going to do that again. No, because it, nor should he, because he is naturally more of an aggressive slashing player. He's not a spot, you know, a, he's not a James Harden who's going to shoot from the half court. He is getting older. He's on the wrong side of 30. And so his body should break down worse 
than most bodies should. And that's not a knack, a knock against him. Russell Westbrook, similar player, also sh- showing his years um, worse. Now, in the meantime, if you're the Bulls, I'm worried. You know, he's 33. You know and, who I'm worried about if I'm the Bulls? Um, I'm, pick your favorite here because I'm going to pick two guys who are going to surprise you. Are so you going to say first. Patrick Williams? I'm gonna, saying pa- Patrick Williams. I am going to say Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams. He was, was the number four back. overall pick a and few years ago, he and he looks, just he's every. He, he just looked bad this year. He, he just looks bad. soft. He looks like he doesn't want to be a superstar. Now, do you think like he knows how to make the next jump? Do you think it's partly he's just not happy in Chicago because Chicago doesn't seem to have ever known what to do with him? I do think definitely it's fit. You know, they they're never hundred percent sure is he going to be an offensive minded guy or a defensive minded guy. It's also he you know he's still a super young kid. He is only twenty one. Um, that was you know that injury was was definitely probably the first major workplace adversity, you know, he's faced ever in his life. White is only 22. Um, Yeah. Which is another ridiculous one either. You you want to talk about or get off the pot moments. Bulls do something with Kobe white, please. It's ridiculous that you are just stashing him to one day, you know, go to Jante Murray torched earth on you as he leaves in free agency. Uh, You know, please, please get him out of there. Uh, but, I think he, I do believe he's a free agent at the end of the but year. But yeah, no, I mean you have so you have significantly more talented point guards on this team than Io DeSumo, but just between injuries and, and hatred of Kobe White, DeSumo is not ready to be DeSumo is very comparable to Quentin Grimes. Two guys who may one day have a ceiling of being a viable starting combo guard who are just not ready yet. And um and so I I it's been ugly. It's been a they're another team who would be very low on my power rankings. I don't think they're going to end up being record-wise that bad. I think they'll but, still end up in like the middle but, of the. Yeah, but man, oh man, they they look weak. They look like they're going to have to really scrap to get some some bad, you know easy wins off bad teams. What do you got, Kev? Kobe White. So for the Kobe White contract, his 2022-2023 club option was exercised, and he becomes a restricted free agent in 2023. So right yeah. after the season, he's a restricted free agent. I, I just hope they don't match anything. Just let him leave. Why? Why? Oh my god! Just let him leave. Yeah. Just you. You have zero interest. The guy was supposed was drafted to be your starting point guard. You never gave him that opportunity after he got hurt, which is always seems to be an issue with the, with the the Bulls. Is they get they draft these rookies and then they get hurt and then they're like, yeah, we're never going to use this guy ever again. And then they sh- ship him off. Uh, uh, the Wendell Carter. I don't know. If, I don't remember if Wendell Carter was injury, but they just gave up on Wendell Carter. And now he's a, a a good start, not amazing, but he's a solid starting center in the NBA. Um, uh, uh, Bobby Portis is a solid player in the NBA. I'm not, now, granted, obviously, solid players don't make you a championship team, right. but quitting on people so early when they're still young is just the thing that the Bulls seem to like to do. And when Carter all even give a pass to because they used they used him as a trade chip to get Vucevic, knowing that they were going to try and go all in, which is why they then went and got DeRozan. I, I get that. But simply taking an asset and just letting it rot through its rookie contract on your bench is seemingly one of There's the dumbest other things guard. you can the, do. Whoever the point guard was before um, Kobe White that they drafted. You're trying to get me to say Chris Duhon, aren't you? No, not Chris Duhon. There was a guy a couple years before Kobe White, um, who who had a pretty had a high ceiling, low floor, <laughs> which is a, a player that the Bulls love. <laughs> Sounds like a Bulls player, Kevin. I I cannot. I can if we were playing name that bull, uh, I would. He's be calling, I the guy's not in the league. I would anymore, be calling to bull my on right now. Oh, I actually um, um, speak. Oh no, I put it inside. But let's see. Let's see if we can. Uh, I we had can find out what he's talking about somewhere at one point. I was gonna wear it, and then I decided not to. The Bulls don't deserve don't deserve my jersey. <laughs> Speaking of of undeserving, talk about the Toronto Raptors. You the Raptors deserve to have their jersey worn today. Um, I almost no, no, wore no, they my. They do, but I'm, I just meant the the whole like fight. Oh yeah, I almost yeah. wore my Miami Heat jersey today, and I said I'm not doing it out of out of sheer lack of respect. Would you like to lead off on this? One? I know nothing about this. Oh, thank God. I get to rant. Um, in case well, you missed it last, last night we had a fight in the NBA. Um, Caleb Martin, who in my opinion deserves to just be straight up kicked out of the league for this nonsense, um, effectively sucker shoved uh, rookie Christian Coloco uh, straight out of the court. He just shoved him into the first row of the stands. Now that's hard in, in a, in a vacuum. Yeah, first of all, Coloco, very tall guy. I mean, you could probably just hit him at the legs and he'd, he'd go down. Um, why to just show off your strength like that? I have no idea. But here's the issue. 
first of all, they just got tangled up under the basket. Now, you don't know what else they've been saying, but the actual play by no means merited an actual fight. More importantly, you are you are Caleb Martin. You are being called upon to have a bigger role this year by all accounts out of Miami. You are at home. He is a rookie, and you are up 22. It was 81 to 59 when this fight started. So first of all, why are you doing anything that falls under the category of doing too much? Just let him get the, the defensive rebound and go down the court. What is that offensive rebound going to do? Secure your place as the seventh man on a team that generally doesn't have much depth anyway? No. What's it going to do? Put you up 24? Who cares? As it was, Toronto ended up storming back in this game. They didn't win, but they made it close, probably because you inspired them more than anything you actually got out of this. It was a dumb hit. It was a sucker hit. You're picking on a rookie because you thought you'd be able to bully him around, and he got right back up and got in your face. So you got what you deserve, Caleb Martin. It was a dumb decision, and I, I really, really hope you're suspended for this, and I really hope Spolster puts you further down on the bench for this. But, boy, this the problem of last year is showing itself again with the heat, their well, lack of death. Well, but here's, here's the other thing that's showing. So – when this happened, two guys very important. Uh, Kevin, are you watching this? By the way, I see you looking at the. I'm, I I haven't had a chance to look at the exact video yet. I was reading if, the article. I haven't had a chance to look at the. Okay, video. if you if you get a chance, mute yourself and watch the video for a second. But so what you'll notice when you watch the video, if you haven't watched the video, by the way, please watch it. Um, you'll notice two players. Aside from the two fighting, you'll notice two players. I want you to focus on. One is Kyle Lowry, who literally bear hugs. Um, Caleb Martin. He gets he gets on Caleb Martin. Not in like a break up the fight way, but Kyle Lowry, who played for Toronto, knows what a brotherhood is. Toronto acts like brothers in this thing. They come to attack Caleb Martin. Kyle Lowry protects his guy, knowing that Toronto will kill him. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, you have Jimmy Butler, who's kind of doing like this motion, almost like a cat, towards players on both teams like, just let Caleb Martin get beat up. It's cool. Jimmy Butler looks like he could not be any more disinterested in this thing. And that's wow. the problem. Watch watch okay, Lowry, so watch Lowry and Butler here. Look at Lowry knowing that an onslaught's about to come. And look at Jimmy Butler just eh. eh. <laughs> but M Miami comes off. What looking. was Caleb Martin doing? He not only just like yeah, I get it. He he was in, they were entangled and he got a little aggressive. That happened sometimes. You throw the guy. You do not need to go over and then stand over him talking trash. Right. That's clearly what just happened. Right? Why? He, Why was in, that necessary? He's in the wrong to begin with. Period. And then the situation here is absurd. If I'm Butler and if I'm Lowry, I'm mad at him. Right. And and that's and neither of them in any way show any support for their teammate or any correction for their teammate. One guy protects him, knowing that Toronto will kill him. And one guy looks, Jimmy Butler looks like he could care less what actually happens here. He's going, he's going through the motions of what a superstar is supposed to do. And that's it. It is a very, very joke look for Miami. And all it did was just rile up Toronto anyway, because the game got closer after that. Actually, it's oddly enough, it looks decision. like Lowry it was, was fighting Martin. <laughs> right. right. It, it, be, Lowry's passion in this thing has nothing to do with Toronto. He clearly likes Toronto and is more comfortable with the Toronto players than the Miami players. Remember, he played with Siakam. He played with Van Fleet. He knows a bunch of these guys, but he goes ahead and protects Kayla Martin because he knows what this Toronto team is capable of. You're, you're a smaller guy picking a fight with a bigger dude. And here's one more thing that's very important here. Ke Kevin, see if you can identify who did not get in the screen. Did you notice somebody was missing? Was it Bam? Uh, Bam. No, but right, right team, right, right position. Where's Where's Udonis Haslam? Oh yeah, isn't He's, that his whole point? Right. <laughs> so if Udonis Haslam doesn't come to your aid, what do you think this team actually thinks of Caleb Martin? If the guy who literally is signed just to get in fights doesn't come over and fight for you, uh, there might be a problem with Caleb Martin here. Okay? Now, and I, I, this is not to be. I feel like the Martin, the brothers, right? Yeah, Caleb and Cody. They're not, they don't seem cut for the NBA. And maybe I'm just overreacting. They're, they're, they're a little undersized. I mean, they're a little bit of a, a, a lost swingman position. And 
um, you know, what they look like in college. I, I forget Nevada, maybe New Mexico. You can look it up, Kev, wherever they went to school. I think they might've been Nevada boys. Um, but because they played at a slightly smaller school, they organically look like they could have been more destined for stardom. And this looks like their ultimate role, somewhere between a seventh and ninth guy. But again, you're a veteran player by this point. You know your role in this league. You are a bench player. You are not fighting rookies when you are up 22 at home. It's just dumb. Okay, so Caleb Martin. you. Sorry, Kevin. Caleb Martin's 27 years old uh, from Moxville, North Carolina. Played for Oak Hill Academy with twin brother Cody Martin. What okay, considering I asked what college they went oh, to, that sorry, was a oh, whole I'm lot sorry, of nothing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, missed that part. Um, they would both play for NC State Wolfpack and the Nevada Wolfpack. There you go. So they went to Nevada. There you go. No, that was one of the ones no, you said. I'll take the wind. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I wanted to point out that it looked like in the video where, from from the angle where um, the other player hit Caleb Martin by accident as he was falling down. It looked like as as He's supposed to do as as hey, Martin. Yeah. No, no I'm, I'm just saying like as Martin had thrown the other player, it looked like he was. It looked like he had accidentally hit Martin, and Martin thought that it was like an intentional shot. I don't. Well, I don't should have done what he did, but I'm just saying that. That's what it looked like from that one angle I saw in that video. Martin, right. you're a clown. You're you're getting close to being Grayson Allen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. <laughs> this is a nine on the Grayson Allen scale, and only because it's your first offense. That's the only reason it's not a total ten Graysons. This is a nine on the Grayson scale. That's a great. I scale think you can make it. it an is. Honor. I can't wait to use that all year. Speaking of Grayson Allen, hasn't he actually been looking good this year? <laughs> Because he's not being a clown. He's a he's a he's a viable three point option if he just isn't kicking people in the thigh. Uh, I say thigh because we're on the internet, but you you all know what Grayson stats. Allen does. Um, ba, 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 ba. this season he is shooting thirty percent from three. Is this the season? Eleven eleven points, four boards. You can't be mad about that. Three from assists Grayson as Allen. well. I mean, that's that's not. Yeah, he's averaging three assists, four well, boards. That's pretty decent. Um, he was doing better in game one. Game two was a, oh, that's how was, that's how averages work. If you if you're playing along at home, you have a bad game, your averages go down. Um, game log. Here we go. Game one, he was maybe I'm just wrong. Oh, here we go. Here's the actual games. Uh, that was, no, those was preseason. Maybe I just don't know. Anything. I have it. I have it. Okay. So okay. Game one, he was 12 points, four assists, three rebounds. He was. Uh, his, his shooting from the field wasn't great, but his three point was two for six, which is what you want, right? You want a guy to make at least one out of every three. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Knox, take lessons. <laughs> at least two shots a game. But again, that's that's what Caleb Martin could be. He could be a guy who goes eleven and four, and you know, doesn't almost get beat up by an entire Canadian basketball team. Um, just, I, it just, to get back deer. on track, it's just, <laughs> fear the deer. It's just, it's infuriating to watch that level of nonsense this early in the season from a team. Cause remember Miami all last year for about the Where's first 60 passion games, at the end of last year. Right. Remember for the first about 60 games last year, I actually kept alluding to the fact that Miami seemed like the most steady team. And then all of a sudden, remember they just imploded and Spolster and Ben Butler had that fight. And then after that, they just seemed dead. And so you kind of wondered this year, would Miami get back to being that focused team now that they let a good opportunity go? Or was last year's turmoil at the end of the season going to carry over? It Nonsense like, it like this does not help. Right. Like this is, is all, excuse me, sorry. It's obviously way too early to panic. But boy, it you don't want to see that if you're – a heat fan. Right. I mean, uh, and and think of it this way. What do you not want to do if you're a student? We've always And they don't have trade assets, right? right? They they just they're 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 very limited. They don't want they can't trade they don't want to trade Bam. They don't want to trade Bimmy Butler. They don't want to trade like in order to to change this team, they have to have some sort of player that they're going to trade, right? Right. And assets on top of that. Caleb Martin no one wants either. Right. And and more even more importantly, even if they even if they're a good team this year, it doesn't matter because as a, we've all been students at some point, right? And as a student, what are the two things you don't want to particularly do? You don't want to be the first one to get sent to the principal's office, right? You don't want to be the first one to get in trouble. And you don't want to be labeled. Nobody wants to be that guy in any role in school. We all want to just be ourselves. And all Miami has done now is they have put a target on their back as the team that is either 
willing to rumble. And so you're going to start getting teams playing Miami tougher, or they're going to see it the way I did, which was they looked really, really weak in that fight. And now teams will think they can bully the heat around because if they get into a scuffle advantage, any team other than the heat, it was so dumb to do this this early in the season. I just, oh, I hate it. All right. Let's end today's episode with a fun rookie fact. Hmm. Ben Matherin is the first rookie since 1995 Jerry Stockhouse, Stackhouse, Stackhouse, Stackhouse. Nice. All right. Stackhouse shout out. To score at least 72 combined points in first three career games. Wow. And the others to do it since 1980 are Hall of Famers. Wow. All right. Put him in. I'm in. So I'm not saying he's a Hall of Famer. That's nope, not what I mean in. by that. Lock it up. But for where he went in the draft, he's looking like great value. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Now, now, granted, a little bit of luck here. Because Chris Duarte did start that first game and got taken out with an injury, allowing Matherin to actually show off his stuff. Now, he might have been so much better in his limited minutes, they would have had to change it anyway. But for a team that seemingly won't take Isaiah Jackson off the leash, even though his per 36 numbers are insane, you get the feeling that if Matherin didn't have a clear needed path to play game one, he might have not got that opportunity. So, you know, while the stat itself is very cool, also shout out to Matherin for making the most of his opportunity um, and and giving he's, the Pacers something to really have to consider for a team that generally isn't crazy about playing its youth. This is going to be quite a interesting rookie of the year race. More, it, more so in that it seems like there's a lot of top talent where yeah, there is, but I think it's going to be, it, it, we'll see. Obviously it's a long season. I've, I think uh, ultimately the way things are going and based off of just sh- the sheer number of talent of, of, of lack of talent around him, it's going to be uh Boncaro. Exactly. And that's the thing. Boncaro um, just has I such really, a clear path to be. I thought, one I thought it was going to be uh, Smith personally, because mm-hmm. you know, Houston's bad. Someone's got it, but boy, Houston just doesn't seem to know what yeah, the we don't, we don't have enough time to break down what we'll we talk saw about in the Houston. first couple games of Houston yeah. season, but it's everything you would dream it would be. If if you have if you have you know NBA game, by players, the way, go watch a Rockets game. You'll just feel by better the way, about yourself. You cannot feel com- confident if you're um, what's his name, the guy that they just resigned that they signed to an extension. Um, the the point guard for the Houston, uh, Jaden Green. No, Did they just resigned Green. Oh. Uh, not green. Um, they got the, from Cleveland. They got from Cleveland, I think. Kevin, their point Kevin guard. Porter Jr.? Yeah. Uh, Porter Jr., the other Porter Jr. Oh, who who also belongs on Houston, who is also always at least a four on the His Houston contract stand. is not – if I'm him, I don't know why he signed that contract. It's not really guaranteed. Because he's a four on the Grayson scale at all times. I, he's another clown. He's, he belongs he, on him. He's Bad not going to – they drafted, I forget the guy's name this year, Trey or something like that. I don't know. Just let him play the point. Ty Ty Washington. Ty, Ty Washington. Just let him play. I would if I'm Houston, I'm I'm just going. Just youngest <laughs> latest year on a license gets gets the most minutes. I would literally just start my 18 year olds and see what happens. Go 0 and 82. Why not? All right. Thank you all so much. Oh, sorry, Kevin has something he wants to say. I just wanted to point out that Kevin Porter Jr.'s current contract extension runs till the end of this season. He does have a trade restriction. There's a poison pill restriction until July 1, 2023. Yeah, and then like his it's like his guaranteed money is horrible for him. Like it's all in the first in the one year and then like nothing for the rest. It's great for Houston. Horrible for him. I guess maybe both of them figure that if these rookies actually develop, he gets lost on this team anyway. Yeah. Maybe Kevin Porter doesn't want to be the eighth man behind, you know, Washington and Eason and Smith and all these young guys. Well, anyway. Um, Thank and you all the for watching. Upcoming contract extension. He becomes an unrestricted free agent in 2027. And a Nick in 2031. God damn it. God, I hope not. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Don't listen to Mongo. <laughs> <laughs> about the about the Porter Jr. thing. Everything else, I'm your guy. Um remember, like, share, subscribe, ring that bell. Uh, for those of you listening to us on um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any other podcasting thing, continue to do that. But, you know, jump over to YouTube every once in a while. Give us a like and a comment. Tell us how much you wish you had beards and mustaches like us. I no, have a beard. We, we tried you to have do... a mustache. Yeah, but no beard. I said beards and mustaches. Uh, I specifically said that because you don't have a beard. Learn your, learn, <laughs> learn your conjunctions. Um, 
Listen, you, if you're just joining us, thank you so much for being here tonight. You can tell we go around the league as best we can, but we do take requests. So if you're out there listening, saying, you know, I'm a Nuggets fan, you didn't talk about us tonight, comment in the, you know, comment below, find a way to get to us. Let us know you want to hear more about your team, and we will do our best to get to everybody. Jokic killer pass against the Warriors. Loved it. Go Expos. See y'all.